So now let's talk about penetrating neck trauma. And that's a horrible place to get shot or stabbed because there's so many vital structures in here. Probably the best place to start is with the anatomy. So let's start with the triangles of the neck. And there are really two triangles of the neck. And they're divided really by this muscle here, the sternocleidomastoid. And so we have two triangles. The first one is the anterior triangle which has a midline border as one, the angle of the jaw, and the sternocleidomastoid as the other boundary. Now the posterior triangle has the clavicle, the uh, trapezius, and then the sternocleidomastoid as borders. And the reason these are important to know is because you want to know what is inside of those triangles. In the posterior triangle you really have the spinal column and the vertebral arteries. And in the anterior triangle, we also have plenty of vital organs in there as well. And then the other anatomical thing that is important to know is this muscle covering the neck here. And that pretty much inserts on the skin and ends on the skin. But this is important because it covers all of the vital structures, the platysma. And the next thing we should know are what are called the zones of the neck. So the first zone goes from the base of the neck all the way to the cricoid cartilage. Uh, so that's called zone one. The second zone goes from that cricoid cartilage all the way to about the angle of the jaw. And finally the third zone goes from the angle of the jaw to the base of the skull. And these zones are important again because of what is contained within them. So zone 1 has the uh, trachea, the esophagus running through it, there are blood vessels down here, but also the tops of the lungs, the domes of the lungs are in zone 1. Uh, zone 2 here contains all kinds of vital structures. It contains again the airway, the trachea, the esophagus runs through here, your carotids, your jugulars, your thyroid is in here. So all sorts of very critical uh, vessels and uh, nerves and aerodigestive stuff comes right through here. And finally, zone 3, yes, it also contains vessels, uh, but really what this is, is this is the base of the head. And so anything that uh, goes through zone 3, technically you should worry about penetrating the skull as well. So in review here, we had uh, looked at so a few very important things. And the first is the triangles of the neck. We look at the anterior and the posterior triangle. The platysma is a very important barrier, the muscle, and of course the zones of the neck, zone 1, zone 2, and zone 3. And finally, let's look at the important structures that lie within the neck. That platysma muscle layer that we had mentioned before, it's very important. We also have here the jugular, that's the vein, and right next to it we have the, the artery, the carotid. And lying on top of the vessels is the sympathetic chain. And of course we have in the middle the airway, and right behind that is the esophagus, the digestive tract. So the first thing that you want to know uh, when you have someone who has penetrating trauma to the neck is which triangle is it in? Because it will tell you what's at stake here. If it's in the anterior triangle, we know we got the vessels, the airway and esophagus. And in the posterior triangle, we got the spinal column and the vertebral arteries. Then the next question you want to ask yourself is does it cross the platysma? The platysma is a very thin muscle. But if it doesn't go through the platysma, maybe you've got a superficial, superficial slash to the neck, then all you have to do is suture up the wound and send them on their way. But if it goes through the platysma, then we got to worry about other things. And then finally, the last thing that we look at is the zones of the neck. And the zones of the neck are important because it tells us what is potentially injured there within each of the zones. Remember we said in zone 1 we have vessels and the aerodigestive tract as well as the tops of the lungs. Zone 2 has vessels, nerves, aero, uh, airway and uh, um, digestive system as well as uh, zone 3 then which also has that stuff but also the base of the skull and so that's the important why it's important to know all this anatomy here and finally 
if you do have injury to the neck, if you know what's in the neck, you can tell what kind of symptoms you have to worry about. Let's say that the carotid is injured. What might you see in these patients? Well, they could have stroke symptoms since we are depriving the blood flow to the brain by cutting this thing. Uh, so that would be terrible. They may have an expanding hematoma. And this is problematic because as that blood collection grows and grows and grows, it eventually pushes on the airway and cuts off airflow. They could have bleeding that won't stop. Remember, this is a very, very vascular area. Or they may have a bruit or a thrill if, if the blood vessels are damaged. Or if you nail one of the subclavians as well, you could get a pulse deficit from one side to the other side because you're going to lose blood on the injured side, so that pulse will be weaker. So that's what happens with carotid injury. Now lying right on top of the carotid is a sympathetic chain. So what happens when that gets injured? Well, if you damage that, you're going to get Horner's syndrome. And so if you remember what that is, you're going to get loss of sweating on one side, ptosis, and a pinpoint pupil. And so if someone says, yeah, I'm only sweating on one side, or that pupil is tiny, and they got that eyelid droop, then you got to worry about the sympathetic chain being damaged. And the real worry about that is if the sympathetic chain is damaged, look what's right underneath it. Then you know that there's probably some vessel damage there as well. Now, what if the jugular gets damaged? Well, you can also get a hematoma formation, excessive bleeding, and hypotension. Okay, what if the airway gets damaged? Then you'll, then you'll look for crepitus, the voice may change, they may have pain with coughing, or even they cough up blood. It, they may have uh, difficulty breathing, they may have strider. Uh, and finally, let's look at if the esophagus gets damaged. These guys may have painful swallowing. They may have blood, bloody saliva, or if you put an NG in, there may be blood in that aspirate, or maybe a bloody vomit. They'll probably have crepitus, and they will also have neck pain. And esophageal injury is the most missed. And just for completeness sake, the things in the posterior triangle, you, you also have to worry about the phrenic nerve and the vertebral artery. If you bag the phrenic nerve, you're going to get... Uh, hemidiaphragmatic paralysis, and if you get the vertebral artery, you can have syncope or even stroke-type symptoms as well. Now, these are important because these are hard signs of injury. These are things that if you find any of these things, you know something bad is damaged, and this pretty much would buy you a trip to the operating room, not you, the patient buy the patient the trip. Hopefully you don't have penetrating neck trauma, but that is what gets you to the OR. And it all really is based on the anatomy. So this first video just looked really at the anatomy of the neck. And so in the next one we'll talk about what to do when you have penetrating trauma to the neck. Thanks. Bye.